Welcome to Rams Up, a Los Angeles Rams podcast. We are a proud member of the Pigskin Podcast Network. We cover other SoCal sports news of interest, but we're mostly about your Los Angeles Rams. I'm your host, Mark. Let's get to it. Welcome back, Ram fans, to episode 21 Season 2 of L.A. Rams Up. I have to start off with an apology. I had stated we were going to come back this week with a Dodger episode. That has been delayed. That'll be a couple weeks from now. You'll be hearing that. I'll have Paul Walia and Tom Quartz on to discuss all things Dodgers for one segment. See how they're doing. Drop in on the Dodgers. This week, instead, we are going to take a walk down memory lane, we're going to revisit the St. Louis Rams of 2007 through 2011. As painful as that is going to be, we're going to do it. Delve into those teams. What went wrong? Why were they so bad? It's going to be a little bit painful, but hopefully some fun as well. And however, it will also help us appreciate even more the Los Angeles Rams that we have these days. So last week, we dropped a YouTube video. We'll be trying to do that once a week on our YouTube channel, a little four, five, six-minute videos, and we discussed the Aaron Donald contract, and we wrapped up that video by stating that who's the next man up? Well, it would be Cooper Cup, and sure enough, that's what happened. Cooper gets an extension, $110 million overall over the next five seasons. The extension itself is for about $80 million over three years, $75 $75 million guaranteed. That is the most guaranteed money given to a non-quarterback offensive player in NFL history. And it's only, well, only, feel weird saying that, a $17.8 million cap hit this year. Donald said, Aaron Donald said this year is $24 million. So the Rams have actually freed up $3.625 million in cap room with those two new contracts. And A healthy side effect from that, a nice side effect, is that this is going to put Seattle and San Francisco, two divisional rivals, and kind of back them into a corner a little bit when it comes to their two wide receivers, Debo Samuel for the 49ers, DK Metcalf with Seattle, both of them looking for big new contracts. Do they have the cash to get it done? And yes, it is a matter of cash, at least partly. There's some good stuff out there on the Rams salary cap approach, and it has to do with a concept called cash over cap. Andrew Brandt uh, was on the Pat McAfee show on Twitter explaining it. I encourage you to go review that. I'm not going to try to explain it here. But the bottom line, at least, well, one of the takeaways is that maybe the essential takeaway is that owners with a lot more cash available to them have an advantage because of this cash over cap concept. Ian Rappaport on NFL took a stab at explaining how the Rams approach things, too. I think Andrew Brandt's explanation is spot on, though. The Rams have also released Trevin Howard. I was sad to see that. I think this has to be strictly a salary cap move, right? I think he played well. Maybe he was a little bit overpaid at this point. But the Rams certainly aren't deep at linebacker. They got Bobby Wagner... Ernest Jones, and a rookie undrafted free agent, Jacob Hummel. Maybe they've seen enough of Hummel to think, hey, he's our third guy in. But they still seem extremely thin there. Don't know if they're going to bring Howard back. Hopefully they can at a lower price. But I would not be surprised if someone else snatched him up. Heard that Kyron Williams, the rookie running back, has a foot injury that's going to delay his progression And Colin Coward had an interesting podcast. You might want to go listen to it. Arguing that the Rams are now America's team, not the Cowboys. It was pretty entertaining. Not sure if I agree with him and uh, his logic. But hey, Colin, just pushing people's buttons. It's a good listen if you're a Rams fan especially. So we'll be back in a minute for a walk down memory lane. The dark days for Rams fans 2007 through 2011 and Look for a drop midweek, another drop on our YouTube channel. I'm going to talk about the fearsome four players I was wrongly excited about when the Rams drafted them. Back in a second. 
Are you ready for the NBA champs to be crowned? Join the finals action with DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code TPPN. Make any $5 bet during the NBA Finals and get $150 in free bets instantly. That's promo code TPPN, only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. You can also create your own parlay by combining multiple bets like which team will win, total threes made, total rebounds, and boom, you have a shot at an even bigger payout. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. You know, with the Donald signing recently, followed by the Cooper Cup signing, the fact that we have been to two Super Bowls recently, winning one of them, that we have the best young coach in the NFL, the best coach period perhaps, excellent front office, the most beautiful stadium in the world perhaps. It got me thinking, how spoiled have we become and how great are things these days compared to those dog days in St. Louis and And I went back and looked at a handful of seasons, specifically 2007 through 2011. And it's just amazing how far we've come. Um, And I think if we look back at those years, it will make us appreciate where we're at right now even more. So I'm going to take you on a walk down memory lane. Bad memories, mostly. But it's just amazing what this franchise has become in the 10 to 15 years since then. So let me start with 2007. The Rams went 3-13, and Scott Linehan, second year. They were 0-8 out of the gate. Torrey Holt and Steven Jackson were on that team. Isaac Bruce was still there, had 733 yards receiving. Mark Bolger was the quarterback. Joe Kloppenstein was a tight end. Orlando Pace only played in one game that season. Alex Barron was on that team. Some good defensive players, Leonard Little, Adam Carricker, Leroy Glover, Brandon Chiller, I always liked him. Pisa was on that team. Had two good DBs, Corey Chavis and OJ Atagwe. Didn't matter. Scott Linehan couldn't figure it out, and it was a dreadful year for the Rams. The next year wasn't much better, 2-14 in 2008. Linehan got fired at the end of the year and was replaced by Jim Hazlitt. Mark Bolger still the quarterback, Torrey Holton, Steven Jackson still there. Orlando Pace's last season with the Rams before he moved on to Chicago. Chris Long joined the team that year. Richie Incognito, Will Witherspoon, and Pisa and Otagwe were still there as well on defense. Horrible year, though. 2-14. and 14. Not seeing the light at the end of the tunnel yet, but man, I was still... Supporting my Rams, watching every dreadful game, hoping for the return of the greatest show on turf, which wouldn't happen in St. Louis, that's for sure. So 2007, three wins. 2008, two wins. 2009, things improving, turning around? Well, not quite. Steve Spagnuolo takes over, and the Rams go 1-15. in Mark Bolger, the quarterback. Stephen Jackson, man feel so bad for this guy. Donnie Avery joined the team. He had 589 yards receiving that year. Keenan Burton was another wide receiver. Randy McMichael joined them as a tight end. Danny Amendola was on the Rams that year. Offensive line included Alex Barron, Jason Brown, and Richie Incognito still. Defense, some solid players. Leonard Little, James Laranitis. Cornerback Ron Bartell, safety O.J. Atagwe. Jackson ran for over 1,400 yards that year, but just four TDs. He was our only great player during the spell, in my opinion. The greatness of Steven Jackson so unappreciated, in my opinion. 
2010, we saw a little bit of improvement. The Rams actually went 7-9 and nine under Spagnuolo. Sam Bradford, the new quarterback, Stephen Jackson and Amendola, two of the stars. Starting wide receivers, quite a contrast to what we have these days, Brandon Gibson and Laurent Robinson. And being the Ram fan that I was, I thought these two guys were going to light it up. Roger Saffold, a new offensive lineman that year. Defense included Chris Long, Niall Diggs, Larinitis, Ron Bartell, still a cornerback, and Bradley Fletcher, a player I really liked. And the safeties, O.J. Atagwe and Craig Dahl, remember him. So 2010, Spagnolo went 7-9. and nine. 2011 must have been a mirage. The Rams fall back to 2-14. Offense led by Sam Bradford, Stephen Jackson, and Brandon Lloyd. Remember him? Brandon Gibson played on the other side at wide receiver. Lance Kendricks was the tight end. Billy Bajima contributed a little bit there. And the offensive line, Roger Saffold, and remember Harvey Dahl? He was like... A poor man's version of Richie Incognito, just a troublemaker, but a good offensive lineman. The defense included Chris Long, James Hall. He was very effective on that defensive line, James Laranitis. Safeties, Darian Hall and Quinton McKell. So that wrapped up a five-year period where the Rams went 15-65. and 65. That's 15 wins and 65 losses, and I witnessed virtually every snap of every game all along believing that this was the game the Rams are going to turn it around. This is where the Rams go off on a 10-game winning streak, get to the playoffs, and win the Super Bowl, and I was continuously disappointed. During this period, the Rams had two players that made it to the Pro Bowl, Tory Holt in 2007, and Stephen Jackson in 2009 and 2010. For contrast, in 2017, the Rams had eight pro bowlers, virtually their entire special team contingent. Pharaoh Cooper, Greg the Leg, Jake McQuaid, and Johnny Hecker, and Aaron Donald as well, and Todd Gurley. Andrew Whitworth all made it, and Jared Goff made it that year. And six of those eight were also all pro. The only ones that weren't were Goff and McQuaid. Six all pro players in one year, while in a five-year period in St. Louis, they had two players accounting for three Pro Bowl appearances, none of them all pro. What about the draft picks during this period? Jay Zygmunt was the general manager during that period. I, I Hopefully I'm pronouncing his name right. And his drafts were just kind of mediocre, really. In 2007, they brought on Adam Carricker and Brian Leonard. Jonathan Wade, the defensive back. Clifton Ryan, defensive tackle. He had a decent career. Other than that, I mean, I think the only ones that really contributed significantly or had significant careers were Carricker, Leonard, and Ryan. The rest, to be honest with you, I barely remember. 2008, Sigmund still at the helm. A couple of good draft picks here. They added Chris Long and Donnie Avery. John Greco was a third-round pick. Two linebackers that contributed a little bit. Chris Chamberlain and David Vabora in the seventh round. Avery was drafted instead of Deshaun Jackson. Still remember that. Chris Long had a good career, but I don't think he ever lived up to being the overall second pick in the draft. Don't get me wrong. Love Chris Long. He's one of my favorite people. I just don't think he was a great player. Not the great player we hoped for. And I'll say one thing about John Greco. We went to a game in St. Louis, and my son, having very few opportunities to meet and greet a Ram player. We waited outside the stadium after the game for about an hour or so. Might have been longer. And one player came over to the gate, to that little fence they have separating fans from the players. One player came over and chatted with the Ram fans, took pictures. 
one player, and that player was John Greco. Now, it's very possible that he was a designated guy that day. I'm not sure, but I know my son really appreciated it. 2009, another draft. This is the draft Billy Devaney took over, and it was probably better than the two previous ones, but still no difference makers here. Jason Smith, the tackle, number two pick overall. Hey, hey, at least we're drafting high in these rounds. We're just not getting difference makers. In the second round, James Laranitis, he's a good player. One of our better players during that stretch. Unfortunately, that's not saying a whole lot. And then in the third round, the cornerback, I really liked Bradley Fletcher. After that, Daryl Scott, Brooks Foster, Keith Knoll, and Chris Ogbanaya, the running back. That's all I'm going to say about that. A couple of okay players, but nothing to sing and dance about. 2010 draft. Billy Devaney again, Bradford, the number one overall pick. Can't say we're satisfied with how that turned out. Second round, Roger Saffold, probably the best pick in this entire period. Now, the thing about Saffold, if you remember, he was the first pick of the second round. And I remember a lot of, apparently a lot of teams were during the evening and the following morning trying to slide up into that pick to take Saffold. The Rams stayed put and drafted him, and he's still having a great career from the Rams to the Titans and now the Bills. Roger Saffold, great pick. Jerome Murphy in the third round. Marty Gilliard in the fourth round. Remember him? So excited when the Rams drafted him. Didn't last long, though. And in the fifth round, the tight end, Michael Humanawani, and he was a guy we discussed in our Fearsome four most difficult Ram names to pronounce, and I was trying to avoid it, but there he is, Michael H. Had a bunch of picks in that year, including Hall Davis, Fendi Onoban, Eugene Sims, he was a good player, defensive end, Marquise Johnson, George Salvi, Josh Hull, linebacker stuck around a little bit. 2011, this was a decent draft, at least at the top, Robert Quinn, and Lance Kendricks in the second round, Austin Pettis and Greg Salas, two wide receivers that initially showed a lot of promise. Who else? Jermail Hines, Mikhail Baker, Jabara Williams, Jonathan Nelson. Well, there you have it. And in contrast, Les Snead takes over, and Les Snead might be one of the best drafters ever. In 2012, Snead's first draft, The hall included Michael Brockers, Janoris Jenkins, Tremaine Johnson, Greg Zerline, Daryl Richardson. Brockers, Jenkins, and Johnson all had great careers. Daryl Richardson, a very productive running back, and we all know about Greg the Leg, and even Chris Givens. They drafted Chris Givens that year, wide receiver. He was okay. So I tried to identify an all-star team from that 2007 to 2011 period. And, you know, I I excluded Torrey Holt, Orlando Pace, and Isaac Bruce from this all-star team. They were, they had stuck around after the greatest show on turf for a year or two. So aside from those guys, what's the all-star team? What is the Rams all-star team from 2007 to 2011? Well, the quarterback would be Mark Bulger, hands down over Sam Bradford, in my opinion. The running back, Steven Jackson, he's the star of this team, as you'll see. The wide receivers, Brandon Gibson, Brandon Lloyd, Donnie Avery. Wow. Compared to what we have right now. And, you know, I was excited about these players at the time. But looking back, don't know how I did it. Tight end, Lance Kendricks. He's a good, solid tight end. The offensive line, well, Roger Saffold, we'll include him. Harvey Dahl, Jason Brown, he was a good player. Richie Incognito, Alex Barron, I guess we have to include him. The defensive line, as a group, would probably be pretty good. Adam Carricker, Leonard Little, Leroy Glover, Chris Long. That's a pretty solid unit. Little and Young on the outside. I could live with that. The linebacker group, pretty strong, actually, compared to some of our recent teams, these guys would fit in pretty well. Pisa, James Laranitis, 
Will Witherspoon, we had him briefly. Brandon Chiller, I believe he was out of UCLA. I liked him. The cornerbacks, not bad. Bradley Fletcher and Ron Bartell. Again, I wouldn't call either of them a shutdown corner, but if they were playing opposite of a shutdown corner, I think that would be a good thing. The safeties, O.J. Atagwe, one of our better players from this period. Quinton McHale, we had him briefly. And the kicker, Josh Brown, solid. And the punter, Donnie Jones, solid. So if you look at this team as a group, why didn't they win? Why didn't they thrive? And I think there's two reasons. Number one, we didn't have that it guy at quarterback. Mark Bolter, Sam Bradford were both okay. But, you know, they kind of had the Jared Goff thing going on. Efficient, could play very well at times, but you're not going to jump on their shoulders and let them carry you to a divisional championship. It's just not going to happen. But the other thing that's really missing is just difference makers, period. Uh, I mean, other than Steven Jackson and maybe Leonard Little, none of these guys, not a single one of them, is a guy that is a difference maker on Sunday. Maybe Saffold, offensive lineman. He, you know, as offensive lineman go, I suppose he might be considered a difference maker. Chris Long, love the guy, love the person. Not a difference maker. Laronidas, solid as they come on the inside at linebacker. Not a difference maker. Neither of the cornerbacks were. OJ Atagwe, he could make splash plays on occasion. But no difference makers here. And that's what separates this team, this five-year team from over a five-year period, from the current Rams, take any one of the Ram teams over the last three or four years, five years since McVay got here, and there's difference makers everywhere, virtually everywhere. Running back, wide receiver, cornerback, safety, maybe not linebacker, but we're getting there. Defensive lineman, I'm not going to leave out defensive lineman. And even their punter, Johnny Hecker, has been a difference maker at times. That, in a nutshell, is why we struggled all those years. And I'm probably going to have to call out the coaching as well. We didn't have the leadership. I was so excited when Scott Linehan joined the team in offensive mind for a team that was trying to rebuild after the greatest show on turf. I really thought he was going to get it done and was so disappointed. And I'm going to get into some specific game disappointments That will bring back some additional bad memories here in a second. Continue our walk down memory lane here. The dark days of the St. Louis Rams, 2007 through 2011, 15 wins, 65 losses. And I found some games that I remember quite well, sadly. A couple of them were actually wins. Hard to believe. Found two out of 15 that I remember quite well, and some ones that were just devastating in more ways than one. Let's start with the 2008 Opener against the Philadelphia Eagles. Eagles 38, Rams 3. Eagles led 38-0 to at one time. This was a bit of a showdown between Deshaun Jackson and Donnie Avery. First round picks of both teams, respectively. Deshaun, 6 catches, 106 yards, 1 TD. No mention of Avery in the box score. I don't think he played. Donovan McNabb threw for 361 yards. Talk about getting your fan base pumped up for the season. Not so much. The Rams get creamed in the opener. And I remember it. I remember getting ready for this game in the morning, thinking, yep, going to be a great season. Going to be a wonderful season. And then that happened. Later on that same year, the Rams 19, Washington 17, Can we call that team by their old name since that's what they were called back then? Probably not. The Washington Commanders. How about that? 
Josh Brown kicks the game winner. A pathetic game, a scintillating defensive struggle. I just remembered this was it for our Rams team. We were on our way. The Rams improved to 1-4. and four. Things were looking up. How pathetic is that? Sure enough, they come back next week and they thrash the Romo-less Cowboys. They're on a run, right? And then they proceed to lose their final 10 games, scoring more than 16 points twice. 2011, another opener against the Eagles. Eagles 31, Rams 13. Uh, Again, every year, week one, Super excited about my Rams. This is going to be it. This is going to be the year they turn it around. We're going to get to the playoffs. This game was a very clear indication that it was just going to be another sad year for Ram Nation. This game, Deshaun Jackson went off again. Six catches, 102 yards, and one TD. Cadillac Williams rushed for 91 yards for the Rams. Later on that year, a couple weeks later, week three, and this one really sticks in my craw. I remember it very well. Ravens 37, Rams 7. The Rams give up three TDs in the first quarter to rookie Torrey Smith. One of the most embarrassing team performances I've ever seen by the Rams, let alone in this five-year period. Smith's first three receptions, 74 yards, 41 yards, and 18 yards. Again, all in the first quarter. The Ravens outgained the Rams 553 yards to 244 yards. And like I say, uh, I I wanted to put a bag over my head. If I'm going to a Rams game at that point, uh, this was a sad team. This was a super sad performance. Embarrassing. 2011 Another win for the Rams, 13-12 to over the Browns. Another masterpiece. Phil Dawson misses a 22-yard field goal as time runs out. The Rams improved to 2-7. and seven. I remember walking out of a sports bar in San Marcos, California, near the university there, thinking, this is it. Things are starting to fall our way. And then they proceed to lose their last seven games, scoring more than 13 points twice. And there's another game I tried to find. I'm I'm pretty sure it was in this period, and I just have this image of the Rams trying to hang on for a win. They're leading late in the game. They have the ball, and they need to run out the clock. Could have been before this period. Could have been after this period. I don't remember. I know Steven Jackson was on the team because the Rams are trying to run out the clock, and one of their offensive linemen commits a penalty I might have been a, a, a false start, a holding, I don't recall. And Steven Jackson went off on that entire team as they regrouped in the huddle. We are not going to lose this game. We are not going to blow it. Let's get it together and close out this win. And they did. And that was one of my better memories. But again, you know, you get excited about these 13 to 12 wins over the Browns for your second win of the season. Pretty much in denial as a Ram fan for those entire five years. I really thought these additions that they had every year, the draft picks, were all something to get excited about. And some of them were, but overall, man, sad days. Sad days to be a Ram fan. But maybe now we can appreciate where we're at with Sean McVay and Matthew Stafford, Aaron Donald, Cooper Cup, Bobby Wagner, and all these great players. Maybe we can appreciate it that much more. That's going to do it for this episode. Remember, you can reach out to us at ramsuppodcast at gmail.com. You can visit our website at laramsup.com. And please don't forget to subscribe and give us that five-star rating. We really appreciate it. And don't forget, keep the horns up, stay safe, and have fun out there. Music courtesy of bensound.com and the YouTube royalty-free music audio library, Crimson Fly by Hama Hama.